Vinay Vermani, I get you back in my chair. Last time we were talking about your second movie, Dr. Cabby. Mm -hmm. And um, tremendous things were happening with that. I mean, it was the first production ever that Salman Khan um, did, internationally speaking. How did you bag that? It wasn't me. It was, I think, the story. Yes. And uh, the script. And, you know, Dr. Cabby was all about being human. So we went to the man himself that's all about being human. Absolutely. You know, one thing that I love about you, and then I want to kind of go back, because I want to talk about you know, things that people don't know about you in mm. terms of, you know, really why you decided to come into this particular type of career when right. really you could do anything. Right. Touch a little bit about the two movies that you mm. um, created. I mm. mean, Breakaway, of course, was a massive hit mm -hmm. in Canada and also in India. And then, of course, your sophomore was Dr. Cabby. Mm -hmm. Both of them have a very similar genre in terms of kind of like the comedic way of telling a serious story, mm -hmm. which I kind of love. Mm -hmm. And I feel that comes from, um, you know, certain belief systems that you have, mm -hmm. being that you are the predominant writer for both the movies. Right. Talk to me a little bit about that. Well, uh, the journey's been a really interesting one. It's been a really personal one in, in both those movies. Breakaway was, a lot of it was inspired by my own life. Uh, conversations that I've had with my father, choosing a career path that's not really conventional relationships that I've had, issues with finding balance between being Indian, being Canadian, trying to fit into you know, the society at large. Um, so both films were very personal for me. And I wanted to create something that had its own unique voice, that was mainstream, but yet South Asian at the same time, because very early on, I kind of realized that there's a big market for movies that for us as South Asians that aren't necessarily Bollywood or Hollywood, they're somewhere in the middle. And I've been really inspired by movies like Bend It Like Beckham, yes. um, American They See, yes. some of my favorite films. So I'm just trying to do the same thing on the home front and trying to just tell everybody's story in that way and, and just kind of fill that niche. I think you've done a great job. Mm -hmm. Two very interesting, funny, emotional, heart-wrenching in, in certain levels. Yeah, that's, that's very important to me. Yes. But, like the films can be funny at, at times, they can be goofy, maybe over the top, but they, they, you know, no matter what I do, my movies will always have a lot of heart and it's something that uh, families can go and enjoy together. And, and I wanna always try to make movies like that. You know, I think that comes a lot from your upbringing as well. You come from a um, family that's very well known to be incredibly close and close-knit. Mm -hmm. um, you guys support each other um, an incredible amount. My guess is that, you know, you haven't had the traditional challenges of telling your parents that you want to do something that is out of the norm. I mean, right. acting isn't still isn't the norm as much as we seem to think that it's a lot embedded in the pop culture of today with um, the right. South Asian community. It really isn't when you look at the, st the statistics. Of no, it all, it's not. Right? I think that uh, our community still, and, and rightfully so, I think that our parents and the generations before us, I think that they just uh, fear, I think that our parents are just so protective of us and, and these types of careers, whether it's acting or anything in the arts or fashion, it's, they're very judgmental careers. Uh, you really have to open yourself up to the world and you have to have a very thick skin. And I think parents being parents just want to protect their kids for as long as they can. Absolutely. I think my parents' hesitation when I told them I wanted to go in front of the camera was that. I don't think that they ever doubted that, you know, would I make it or whatever it was. I think just opening yourself up to that much criticism. Right. So. But I think that's a part of growing and you have to follow your passion. And yeah. then, you know, my, my father said something very interesting to me. He said, you know, if you love what you do, you'll never work another day in your life. And, mm -hmm. and that's what I really have found in this, you know, entertainment business is that when I go to work, if it's a 3 a.m. call yeah. time and we're shooting till 3 a.m., it doesn't matter. It, I love what I'm doing, so it doesn't ever feel like work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, it is work because on one side of it, it's what you do for a living. Yeah. So from that perspective, it's quote unquote work. Yeah. But I do, I understand um, what you're saying. It's And it's really interesting to hear that um, because, you know, it kind of comes from a place um, that is um, full of passion. Mm -hmm. And rather than, and, and I was talking to um, another actor about this um, actually as well, Zabe Sheikh. Yeah. He also mentioned to me that, you know, he made the decision to go into this career. And I feel that yours is a very parallel journey to his in that respect, mm -hmm. that um, he didn't do it from a headspace. Yeah. He did it from a heart space. Yeah. That, you know, 
he just knew that this is what he needed to do with his life. Right. And I feel that's kind of, you know, where you're coming from. Yeah, for me it was a really interesting journey because growing up I struggled with so many personal issues. I was extremely overweight. Uh, I was well over 200 pounds. Uh, I, and I've known you since you were a little kid, and I never saw that version of you. Because <laughs> all those, that must have been when you were all really those young. Photos have been destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you know, and I struggled with um, speech issues. I had a very bad stutter. Yeah. Um, extremely shy speaking in public. Uh, you know, getting up in class and saying a speech was was just a nightmare for me. Yes. So I had a lot of personal issues that I had to overcome. And How do you feel that you overcame them? Because going in, I mean, like, yeah. you know, your parents are right. I mean, you put yourself under a microscope yeah. going into an industry like this. Yeah. You know, media, fashion, film, TV, music. Right. These are microscope industries. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, totally. I mean, for me, it was, I actually overcame it through acting. So right. when I took my first drama class in high school, when I got up on stage, I wasn't stuttering because I was being somebody else in that moment. Right. And so that was something that, um, you know, when I overcame that through performance, it really just opened my eyes. And then I started to kind of take more care of myself and get healthier because being in front of the camera, you have to be healthy. Right. You know, you're working long hours and it is a visual medium at the end of the day, as, as vain as that may sound, but that's the reality is that, especially, you know, playing leading parts. Right. Um, that's one of the commercial realities is a lot of it is making sure that you're in shape and that you take care of yourself yeah and uh, so you know I, I had to go through that rigorous process and yeah. it was just kind of being at the right place at the right time when breakaway happened where it was a story that was personal everybody believed that i could play that part uh, be it you were that part yeah it, you know yeah. a lot of it was me yes. uh, on screen so it just sort of happened and not knowing where it was going to lead to fortunately it did well and then that gave investors and studios confidence to back Dr. Cabby as well. So, right, absolutely. Yeah. And you kind of went to the next level with that one as well, yeah. bringing in someone from Bollywood as big as um, Salman yeah. to um, you know back it. And you know when I interviewed him during the time that you know you guys were doing your press junket, and I asked him the question, why did you choose this one to be kind of like your debut into mm. the international arena? Mm -hmm. And he said the same thing you said because of the story. Yeah, the story is a story that is heart wrenching. It's a universal story, and I. And, and I believe that you do a really great job mm. of telling a story that even though it's very indicative um, of cultural undertones, yeah. you don't really need to be South Asian to appreciate the emotionality Not of the all. messages or the challenges that are associated or even the comedy yeah, yeah, of, yeah. of, of uh, the cliches uh, that uh, are associated with absolutely. it. Absolutely. I think that, you know, for me, the biggest success of Dr. Cabby was the fact that when I would go sneak into theaters, it was so diverse. It was people that were Indian, uh, people from Europe, Asians, people from the islands, all taking in an experience together, themes that they could relate to, but they were all laughing together. Right. So it didn't matter what their backgrounds were, what they were struggling with in their life. For those two hours, they were united by an experience. Right. And that opened my eyes to something so powerful and made me give, like I had a sense of purpose when I saw that. And now I want to take it to the next level. And what is that for you? I think the next level for me is to actually uh, get to the small screen, which is the real big mm. screen. So Yes, today? Yes, Absolutely. today it is. And yeah. I think that, you know, Dr. Cabby with it going to series now in the next year. Mm -hmm. um, I heard about yeah, that. Yeah, so I'm very excited about that. That's How will that be different, um, Vinay? Because it's obviously, you know, big screen to small screen. Yeah. It's not just a matter of the size of a screen. It's right. the entire composition Absolutely. of the story Absolutely. needs to fit within now a different box. Absolutely. So what are you doing differently with this? Well, what we're doing is we're taking just the initial concept forward, which is of this kind of doctor from India who has to drive this cab and every week he's going to have new patients, passengers, new situations, new threats, uh, new friends that he's making along the way. Uh, I already love the, it. The crazy family will still be there. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're kind of taking that forward on a weekly basis. So that's something that I'm doing and uh, writing some other 
fun, interesting projects as well. Kind of maybe you know, maybe taking a step away from comedy for the next one, just getting somewhere Ooh, deeper and that's emotional interesting. on the next one. So, yeah. uh, and is that um, parallel to kind of where you're at um, in your own personal space yeah, right now? Yeah, definitely. I think that I've always been really fascinated with the idea of what it was like for our parents or our generations before us when they first came to America or Canada mm -hmm. or London, whatever it was. So I kind of want to do a period piece from that perspective, 60s yeah. or 70s. And oh, I love that. Yeah, so in kind of our version of uh, um, Pursuit of Happiness, yes. which is which is something that I really want to make as a tribute to your father? Uh, as yeah, definitely. Yes. I think I think uh, my father, your father, yes. our, you know, our, our our mothers, and just seeing that struggle, you know, mm. when, when I I have this one that we don't have, right? No, we don't have that, yes. right? And I and I always become very emotional when I think about my parents walking out of the airport in December in the 70s and being hit in the face with like this harsh climate mm -hmm. and not being prepared for what they were venturing into and that's a story that again is beyond South Asian as well. Yes. So I, I, I mean I'm very passionate about our community just of as you are. Of course you are, absolutely. And, and kind of promoting it in the right way on the yes. right platform so that's, that's really what motivates me. Okay. Yeah. And um, what about um, your choice to go to the um, film school you did, what, very prestigious school. Yeah, the I Lee mean, Strasberg the, yeah. School in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Why did you choose that? I mean, was it like your way of kind of getting away from home and um, maybe having an experience without being within, you know, the comfort level that yeah. we're, we're always yeah, we're always know, in always when we're with sheltered. our families, right? I think right? that I yeah. think that us uh, Indian boys. First yes. of all, we're the biggest mama's boys in the world. And, and we're, Tell me about it. I have a 17-year-old. <laughs> and we're way too sheltered. Uh, so definitely, I mean, that was an amazing experience to get into one of the most energetic and aggressive cities in the world, which was New York. Yes. But I think beyond that, I think that a lot of people don't realize that film, acting, performance is a craft. It's a medium that you need to educate yourself. Absolutely. And I think that us as South Asians, sometimes take it a bit too easy. I think that we look at the surface where our boys are like, okay, uh, the six pack is out, we can become an actor, or we dance well, we become an actor, or right. girls that look beautiful, okay. you know. And I think that there's so much more deeper than that. And so I'm a big proponent of educating yourself in whatever you do. Right. Uh, you know, if it's going to school for fashion, or makeup, or to be a doctor, it, you need to educate yourself. I completely agree, and I don't see why there's a difference in one versus the other? The, because there isn't. And no, there isn't. There yeah. isn't. I mean, if you want to be the best in something, yeah. um, you know, uh, you have to educate yourself. You have to get as much experience as you can. So, you know, going to theater school, uh, you know, where you're performing for eight, ten hours a day, and then mm -hmm. they have impromptu shows where they're saying, okay, get on the main stage and you're going to perform in front of, you know, the entire class and you're mentally exhausted, you're physically exhausted, but that's what reality is on a movie set. Right. You're shooting 16, 18 hours a day, yeah. uh, grueling, but the audience doesn't care how long you have filmed. They only see what they see. So if I look tired or if I'm doing a crappy job, I can't say, oh, you know what, I had filmed an 18 hour day, so that's why I'm really bad at and this. And they scene. don't care. They don't care, right. they don't care. So you need a certain amount of stamina, so yes. I'm, I'm really happy that I went through that process. Well, I mean, um, your, your, your journey in um, you know, becoming the best version of you yeah. um, really came from you know, your passion in this particular genre of art, yeah. right? And you, yeah. you mentioned that just earlier. And it's very similar to um, you know, the story with you know, um, actor um, Hedithik Roshan, yeah. who also had many challenges yeah. that a lot of people don't look at uh, you know, from the outset. And they, they, they say, well, he's the son of someone who's privileged. You know, he's, gotten, he, yeah. he's gotten there because of that. You know, he, he <laughs> looks fabulous. He knows how to dance. Yeah. They don't realize all of the things yeah. he had to go through which is very parallel to the journey that you just told me about. Incredible insecurities, yeah. right? Um, weight issues, yeah. right? He also had, um, you know, stuttering issues, mm -hmm. very similar to you, mm -hmm. right? And it took him years, and he, he still talks about it in interviews, that he's still trying to overcome a lot of yeah. these things. Yeah, so do you find that as well, that it's yeah, an evolving no, process? Yeah, no, you? definitely. You have to keep growing and learning. You have to be the best version of yourself. Um, I think that there are no hands out. There, there's nobody handing you out anything in this world. Yeah. Um, you know, just because you're a producer's son or a director's son or come from a family that um, has been certain, has certain privileges or been blessed in certain ways, that, that does not matter at all. 
that's especially just, it, in our business. It may open a door for that's you. That's what I was going to say. What yeah. it does is it, it, it'll open a door, but you're the one that has to walk through it, and you're the one that's in the spotlight, and yeah. you're the one that has to get the second opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely. Right? And, and you know, to be honest with you, it's, you know, when, when, when you're watching somebody's work, right, you're just in that moment. You're not thinking, of, you, you can't um, buy somebody to like you or appreciate you, no, you or can't. or line up to meet you or want to take a picture with you, especially in the, or you know tweet something nice about you. You yes. know that that doesn't exist. You know our, our our world is so different today. Yes. So I think that sure. I mean I think that I've been blessed to to, to meet certain people. Yes. Um, you know, and, and there's no denying that. Um, but I've never wanted to take it for granted, and I've always wanted to try to prove my own merit. I think well. you've done that. Hopefully. I think it's safe to say that you know you've written your own stuff. You've had a very strong vision about what the message is mm -hmm. that you've wanted. You've been heavily involved in all aspects of both the movies you've done, yeah. and you also did a really interesting movie, kind of in between your own two movies, and that was David, yeah. which I loved. Which was like me uh, trying to be uh, artsy for. A bit. No, but that was <laughs> yeah. so awesome. No, Why right. did yeah. you decide to do that? Uh, because I wanted to throw myself in the most uncomfortable situation that I possibly could. You did, didn't and, you? Yeah, I mean, I, I took off to India for like three months, worked with, uh, you know, a director who's known as like the Quentin Tarantino of India, yes. uh, an incredible studio like Reliance that was backing the film. A lot and, of pressure. A lot of pressure, yeah. but it was completely dark and twisted and mm. artistic and, um, you know, I didn't, you know, there was a lot of action in it and I could kind of totally physically transform myself. So I was kind of like, I don't want to always play this kind of, you know, um, romantic boy or this, you know, funny, right. charming boy. I don't want to do that. I right. want to play a grungy musician and, you know, we had crazy hair and scars and this and that. So it, it was fun. Again, you had dreads, no? I had dreads. Yeah. I, had, I, had, I had long dreads. And, <laughs> I love that. And, um, you know, the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, man, how am I going to pull this off? And I got to a point during filming that where... I didn't want to see a mirror after every take. And you know, I see, and actors do it all the time. You know, yeah. they fix their hair, they fix their makeup. I'm beaten up through the entire film and have, you know, long dreads. So I didn't want to see my mirror because it was just distracting me. I just wanted to be in that moment. Right. So again, I mean, life's about experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you're going to fall flat on your face. And the film didn't do well. Commercially, it didn't do well. Critically, it's. Uh, a very successful film. I think it's going to have a very long shelf life. I think it was beyond its, I think it was way ahead of its time right. for India. And a lot of people have said that it did incredibly well on international circuits. But that's fine though. I mean, it's, you know, you have to kind of look at the positive and everything. And, and well, it's not always about commercial success no, it's when not. you're an actor, right? No, it's not. I mean, look it's at all not. the movies with um, Shaban Azmi and um, yeah. Smita Patel. Yeah, yeah, yeah going absolutely. Back. I mean, those movies, we still yeah. remember them today. Yeah. And they weren't massive commercial successes either. Mm -hmm. So I think it kind of depends on, you know, why what the intent is when yeah. you when you choose a project you yeah. know why what is it about the project that you decide you want to do yeah. what is it about projects in the future that you want to do today like you know what's in your headspace um, I want to start producing uh, aggressively mm -hmm. now I do see you doing in that the next couple of years I think that I want to try and promote um, you know South Asian talent in a very mainstream level. Love that. Love, and love, love, love. You know, That's everything that I'm about. Yeah, no, yes. ab no, ab uh, absolutely. And you know, you'll see both of the films, Breakaway and Dr. Cabby, you'll see how much South Asian talent has been promoted yes. within that. Yes. Whether if it was from acting side or dancers, choreographers, crews, ADs, um, you know, I'm very passionate about that. You know what, sweetheart, to be very honest, um, I feel so excited every single time I hear another great thing happening in, in the lives of people like mm -hmm. you, you know, and this is why I love to sit here and chat with you and, you know, find out more about, you know, what, what is it you're planning for your journey, yeah. you know, and, you know, what would you say to those, you know, kids out there who were like you and me, mm -hmm. were insecure, mm -hmm. didn't feel like perhaps they were good enough or that they had maybe the right, you know, tools to be able to do things that are yeah. out of you know, the norm, yeah. um, what would you say to them based on your experience of having been one of them? Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? I think that for me it started to open myself up to criticism and, and realizing that there were 
weaknesses or insecurities that I had to work on. Mm -hmm. And that actually came from my parents. And I know sometimes we don't like to hear that from our parents. Yes. Uh, because we're like, oh, you know, they're, they're, they're hard on us or, you know, only, only they see these things and, and other people don't. But for me, the reality came when uh, my parents came to me and said, look, you know, maybe you have to work on yourself in, in these certain areas. Right. So it was important to have that communication at home mm -hmm. first and listen to your loved ones. Right. And also go to your loved ones. Like if, if you're feeling something, don't be afraid to look to your family right. and say, how do I fix this? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, is there somebody that I can see about this? Because I don't think there's any parent in the world that would deny their child of getting that help. Right. or getting that guidance. Right. You know, when I had uh, a speech problem, mm -hmm. you know, we were able to find as a family the best, you know, clinic or the best person to see about that. Right. When I had weight issues or health issues, we were able to find the best doctors and, and, and try to, you know, uh, make it work like that. So I think the first thing is um, having that communication with your parents. Absolutely. It's so important, which uh, I really hope that, you know, kids kids do and they kind of embrace that yeah because it, it, there's not enough of it anymore yeah right yeah. there's a disconnect there is that's taking you know, place which is quite tragic yeah, yeah so we need to change that right and yeah no we do and and that's one thing that you know I mean I go to a lot of schools uh, mm -hmm. every year mm -hmm. I went to over 50 schools last year wow. uh, to promote dr. Cabby but also just speak to uh, speak to kids and and I feel that in this world they're they're living in such a different world today with social even, media. Even from you. Oh, uh, right? I, it's it's just so harsh. Yes. You know, and uh, what people write about each other yes. on social media. Yeah. Um, you know, unfairly criticizing each other or calling And it's just being and out it's, there, And it's babe. public. It's, it's out, just there, out there. That's the worst know, part and, of it. And, and once you put something like that out, you can never take it back. Right. So, you know, I think just take care of each other, support each other. Yes. You know, and. Uh, you know, tweet and post things very carefully because that's always going to be there. You right. can't take that back. And I think that kids don't realize that. Yeah. So, you know, just... It's just another bullying ground though, isn't I it? I mean, Salman uh, taught me, you know, one thing that I've learned from his is that, you know, being a good person, being a good human being is the new cool. Right. It really is. Yeah. And I think he's really set that precedent that's really influenced me in my life where, you know, when he goes out to villages and, and does hundreds of surgeries or, um, you know, donate schools or old age homes, that that is cool. That's yes. the new cool. When you I lift agree. somebody up, that's the new cool. I agree. So, you know. And you are cool, babe. And I, I, right. I love chatting <laughs> with you. I can't wait to, to hear so much more about yeah, yeah, your definitely. journey. You've got to come back and share the next big idea that you have. Because absolutely, you, absolutely. you're not just an ideas person. You are a, a person that actualizes um, things that, you know, come to your mind. And that, that, that to me is just such a mm. great role model. And I have a lot of respect for you. And I can't wait well, for the rest of your here, life. Well, same here. And uh, thank you for always supporting us as a community of artists and, and giving us that cool, sexy platform that you do. Absolutely, so, all baby. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.